In this presentation we will look at the shape of wakes left by objects moving on the surface of deep water. These are remarkably similar in form, whether left by a large ship on the sea or a small duck on a pond. This wake is sometimes referred to as a Kelvin ship wake. This follows on from the previous presentation that looked at the relationship between group and phase velocity. We will again assume that the waves are linear, their amplitudes and slopes are small, we also make the assumption that the curvature of the wave crest is also small, so that the propagation is governed by the same rules as we derive for waves with straight crests. If we have waves on deep water whose height is given by a small parameter epsilon multiplied by the cosine of the wave number k times x minus the frequency omega times t, then, assuming both k and omega are positive, the wave crest will move to the right with speed omega over k. This is called the phase velocity. The frequency and wave numbers are related by an expression called the dispersion relation. In a previous presentation we saw that the energy of the waves moves with the speed given by the derivative of omega with respect to k. This is called the group velocity. For waves on deep water the group velocity is half the phase velocity. The crests move faster than the energy. We shall see how this determines the shape of the wake. When we talk about the wake of a ship one of the most noticeable things about it is that if you are on the ship, the pattern of waves in the water appears to be fixed relative to the boat. Yes, the waves are moving across the water, but they do it in such a way that the pattern of crests as a whole moves with the ship. Firstly, let us consider some waves with a constant wavelength moving up to the left, and see how a moving ship will see these. If a ship moves in the same direction as the waves, it will have to move at the phase velocity in order to keep up with the waves. If you were on the ship and you looked at the waves, the pattern of the crest will seem to be fixed. If, on the other hand, you are on a ship moving at an angle to the waves, for example the yellow ship here, you will have to move at a speed faster than the original ship in order to keep up with the waves. Again, the pattern of waves as seen by someone standing on the yellow ship will seem to be fixed. On the other hand, we can look at this from the perspective of the boat. Waves moving in the same direction as the boat will have to move at the same phase velocity as the speed of the boat. But waves moving at an angle to the direction of travel will have a lower phase velocity. A little geometry shows us that if the waves look steady from the perspective of the boat, then the velocity of the boat and the phase velocity of the waves at an angle to the direction of travel of the boat obeys the relation that the ratio of the phase velocity to the speed of the boat is equal to the sine of theta, where theta is the angle between the wave crest and the direction of travel of the boat, as shown. Now we return to the concept of the group velocity, the speed at which the energy of the waves move. The waves in the wake are generated by the ship and move in a straight line from their point of generation. The distance they will move will be their group velocity times the time t since they were generated. Meanwhile, the boat will have moved a distance v times t, where v is the speed of the boat. The wave crests will be perpendicular to a line from their point of generation. It is important to note that different parts of the wake may have different wave numbers and directions of travel, but locally waves in the wake behave like uniform waves. Some simple geometry tells us that the angle between the arrow from the original position of the ship to the position of the wave crest makes an angle of a half pi minus theta with the direction of travel of the ship, where theta is the angle of the wave crest, as indicated. If we call the angle between the direction of the crest of the bit of the wave we are considering and the path of the ship when measured from the current position of the ship phi, as indicated, then the angle between the line joining the current position of the ship and the position of the wave and the line joining the position of the wave and the original position of the ship is a half pi minus theta minus phi. We now use the sine rule. The ratios of each side of a triangle to the sine of the opposite angle are all the same. This gives the expression at the bottom of the page. We have now derived two results. The first from the requirement that the crest of the wave seem to be moving with the boat and the second from how the energy propagates. We now bring in the fact that we are looking at the wake of a ship on deep water, or a duck on a deep pond. This tells us that the group velocity of a wave is half its phase velocity. When we combine these three equations, we can eliminate all the terms apart from those involving the angles. 
We can easily eliminate t from the second expression and rearrange both to give the ratio of the ship speed to the phase or group velocity in terms of expressions involving only angles. The relation between the group and phase velocities can be used to eliminate all but the sign terms. After simplification we end up with the top expression. Using the standard relation for the product of two signs we obtain the second relation. Elimination of the half pi terms by changing the cosines gives the third equation and lastly a little rearrangement gives the fourth equation. If we look at the last equation on the previous page, which is repeated here, it is clear that the left hand side must have magnitude at most one. This means that the magnitude of sine phi must be at most one third. This gives a limit on the size of phi and means that all the waves in the wake must be contained in a wedge behind the boat of half angle arc sine one third, which is approximately 0 0.108 times pi or just under 19 and a half degrees. Since 2 times theta minus phi is a right angle when sine phi is a third, the angle the waves will make at the edges of the wake to the direction of travel will be 0 0.304 times pi, or just over 35 and a quarter degrees. This is shown schematically here. To work out the pattern of waves in the wake, we have to examine this equation. By itself it does not give a shape of a wave in the wake in an obvious fashion, nor does it give the size of the waves or the wave spacing. Firstly, we should notice that for positive angles of phi, smaller than the critical value, there are two possible values of 2 theta minus phi. It can either be between 0 and pi by 2, or between pi by 2 and pi. This means that there are two possible sets of waves in the wake. This isn't so obvious in the picture at the beginning of the presentation, but in this photograph of the wake behind a boat travelling down the Bristol Gorge, we can see the two sets clearly. The ones that are concentrated near the maximum angles, and a weaker set that are more perpendicular to the direction of travel and can be seen directly behind the boat. For each value of phi we have two possible angles for the wave crest. This is shown in this animation. On each line radiating from the boat we have crosses indicating the two possible directions for wave crests. The crests all along these lines are parallel to each other, but their orientations change as the line sweeps between the two extreme values. If we superimpose several sets of these lines of crosses, we get the picture shown here. To find the shape of a wave crest, we have to construct a curve that is parallel to one of the sets of lines in the crosses at all points along its path. This could be done by sketching. However, we can convert this requirement into a differential equation which we can solve numerically in a simple way that will give you, for example, the distance of the wave crest from the boat as a function of phi. The results are shown on the next page. If you look at one curve, you get the result of the calculation mentioned on the previous page. This only gives the shape of one wave crest. To get a more complete picture, we also need the wave spacing. To get this, we consider the waves moving with the ship directly behind it. The phase velocity of these waves is the same as the boat speed, so V is equal to the square root of gravity divided by the wave number. This determines the wave number and hence the wavelength of these waves. This spacing will be the same all the way along this line. When we superimpose a series of wave crests, you get a wake as shown here. This is not the whole story. For reasons beyond the scope of this presentation, you get a jump in the phase of the waves at the cusp-like ends of the curves. Also, the relative amplitudes of bits of the curves can vary and may depend, for example, on the shape of the hull of the boat. We have seen how we can determine the wake of a ship. This theory will apply to any object moving over the surface of water provided surface tension is not important. The shape of the wake and its general features will be the same for anything from an oil tanker on the oceans to a duck on a river.